Michael alone. Michael in the chat once. Hi, Michael. Morning to you. Morning, Vanessa. When well, you're a paramedic, so presumably there were many occasions where when you arrived at, a, a, at the scene of somebody being ill, people had pitched in and helped, I would think. I'd hope, yeah. anyway. Uh, the, I'll, t I'll tell you a story about the bravest thing I ever saw. Yes. And, and, I, and to this day, I still wonder whether I would have done it. Bear yeah. in mind, it was kind of my job. Yeah. You know? But I turned up at the bank underground late one evening. A guy had been drinking heavily, mm. was standing on the edge of the platform, and fell asleep. Oh and he Lord. fell. He fell forward onto the track. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And he was laying on the track unconscious. Mm -hmm. A guy, a passerby, got off of the platform onto the track. Bear in mind, he had no idea if and when the train was coming. Yes. He picked that guy up. He put him on the platform. And he stayed with him until I arrived. Wow. Now, when I arrived, he told me the story. Yes. The train had been cancelled. And he said, oh, you're here now. You're obviously, uh, you're all fixed and you look after him. And he sort of said, I'm off. And he turned on his heels and he walked away. And he didn't get an out of thanks from anybody. No. Now, <clears throat> I don't know. Uh, to this day, mm -hmm. I ask myself still, if I had been the first person on scene mm -hmm. and I saw that guy on the track, mm -hmm. would I have got down and picked him up? Would I have done that? And to this day, I can't answer that question. You never can, can you, though? But but you, you might have done, thing. Michael, because you are that kind of a guy. Right? <laughs> I am and, and also, you're I probably strong, <laughs> strong enough that you probably could have really, I mean, you know, I would have, I don't know if I'd even think of doing it, but if I did, I think, oh, God, would I be strong enough to help to get to get him up? Would I, you know, I, yeah. I, I think I probably would have tried to get a few reinforcements or something. Uh, 20 years, for me, that was the bravest thing I ever saw, and the guy didn't get, uh, didn't get or didn't want an ounce of thanks off anyone. He just said, well, you're all right, you're fixed, he's safe, train cancelled, I'm off. On the and subject of people being, being kind to people, though, and doing things without recompense just because they're decent, nice people, do we mention your mum at this point? <laughs> my mum's 88. My mum's gift was she always knew when she would meet people and knew that they needed someone to reach out for them right now. Mm -hmm. You know, so we used, we were greengrocers and my dad was a businessman. He'd go over to bookies on a Saturday afternoon about three o'clock and me and my mum would work the, the last couple of hours on the stall and sell the last bit of stuff. Mm -hmm. But when my dad went over to bookies, she would say to me, she'd say, right, you know, son, here's a couple of bags of shopping. She'd say there was a couple of girls that come up uh, the, to get their shopping today and they didn't have enough money. And she would say, take the shopping round to those girls. <laughs> and she'd say, um, don't tell your father. You know, she'd say, I can't have those kids going hungry this mm. weekend. You know, and when she was 72, she, was, she went on a counselling course with a salvation <laughs> army. <laughs> yeah. and, I, and I sort of said to her, you know, Mum, what are you doing? She goes, oh, I've got a couple of minders and we do these patrols of, uh, of an evening looking for homeless people, sleeping rough. So I sort of said, OK. So she goes out one night and she finds a young woman sleeping in the doorway mm. of a shop. And um, the young woman's got a baby, four-month-old baby. Oh my God. And uh, uh, my mum sort of said, right, we've got some foster parents locally mm. so we can get you in there tonight, get you... Get you, you can have a shower, I'll get you some food, you can look after the baby. And she said, um, she said, no, I'm not coming. Mm. I'm, not going, I'm not going with you because you'll, you'll phone social services and they'll take my baby off me. Mm -hmm. And um, my mum had quite a difficult um, uh, sort of first marriage herself. She had yeah. six kids and she had six children of her own. And she said to this woman, this girl, she said, uh, <coughs> Still sort of brings me to tears, really. But she said, I'll stay with you. Mm. And I'll make sure nobody takes your baby. Right. And uh, <coughs> she was 72 years old. Yeah. And she kept her word. She sat in the chair, yeah. slept in the chair next to this girl all night. Wow. And made sure no one took a baby. See, when I said uh, about your mum, I mean, I didn't, I didn't know you were going to tell me any of those things. All I know, all I know, because I remember we've spoken so many times, is that she's a, a, a an amazing kind of a, a Salvation Army lady, isn't she? Yeah, and she yeah. and she can still be seen at the age of 88 collecting and God knows what on a daily she, basis. She said, she said to me once when I went down there, she had a shoebox and she gave me a shoebox and it was full of receipts. Yeah. And she, she sort of sells a war cry and she has a little jumble set. Mm. She said every time I give the money in, they give me a receipt. She said, can you add the, can you add the receipts up? Oh, yeah. And uh, there was about 10 years worth of receipts in the shoebox. Yeah. But I added them up, <coughs> and no one would be able to guess how much it 
came to, it came to over 70 grand. Wow. Isn't that you amazing? Know, One uh, lady. Over 70 grand, you know. Wow. But her gift was and is when she comes across people that need help right now, mm. she always steps up. Yeah. Where, could, where, where might people see her today if she's out there <laughs> doing her thing? Because Londoners could have say, are you Michael's mum, couldn't they, if they saw her? Where's she normally? She, she goes to sort of tend to do, she lives with Ashton Kent, yeah. but she's 88. The other thing I need to tell you about her, yeah. that if you met her today, yeah. she's a little old lady wearing glasses, yeah. but she would forget to tell you that she went blind 20 years ago. She had monocular degeneration, so it's like looking through a heavily frosted window, right. but with, with the odd circle of normal glass. Blimey. Yeah. And, and there's no point phoning her now, because I know she's, she's out. I know she's she out. She was on the bus in the town. I know. Past I know she's out doing that. I know. But just if anybody sees her. So she doesn't wear the Sally Army uniform, does she, or does she? No. no. She does sometimes. Does she? But it's, it's really funny, because every time I talk to her, she says, she says, oh, son, I'm thinking about retiring this year. <laughs> and she'd been saying, she'd been saying that since she was in her 70s. <laughs> will you say that Vanessa asked about her on the radio and you told everybody all about her? Yes, I will. Will you, you say? Will you say that we used her as an example of the kindness of Londoners? Please. She, she, she really, like I say, that's her gift. It didn't really matter who you were. You know, we all have times when we need someone to reach out for us. Of course we do. And, and you know, and sometimes that happens, and sometimes it doesn't. But my mum could sort of see it in people, hmm. and that was her gift. She, your mom, I mean, I, I, you know, I don't, I don't, I've never met you, and I've never met your mum, but I just think, I just think, she, I always think of her because I always think she's out there indomitably, and you know, please God, she'll carry on doing it for another, think, another one hundred and twenty years. A, I think there's a Facebook page that says something like, um, "Give Vivian Sanderson an honour." Oh yes, let's. Why don't we sign up to that? You can, you, you know, you can push for that. You know, you can, you can back her for a nice OBE or something. Well, she, she, like I say, it's not new. Yeah, but she's basically. the lady who deserves one, isn't she, Michael? Go on, look on the thing, because that's how it works. You just get nominated by people who know you and love you. She, um, she, when she was younger, she, she didn't really, she wasn't particularly religious, but she always enjoyed the community of the church, so she was guide captain and brown owl and mm -hmm. things like that, you know, in her younger days. Yes. And that's, what we, and, that, and that's what we just heard that we need is more of those, because yeah, we have not well, people doing that anymore. When my father died, she became a Salvationist about 10 years after he died. Mm. And um, like I say, you know, she's sort of thrown herself into it. At 88 years old, she's never hung. Make sure you could get on that honour thing. Go on. Get, make sure you get her nominated or something by this afternoon. Michael, lovely to talk to you. Thank you for calling. I, I you know, I, I didn't know he'd cry when I said his mum, but I thought maybe he might.